Thank you, Father. Well, the final day, and here's what I say. I want to thank everyone that has ever believed in me, has ever listened to what I had to say, and I always believed that it was a season of God that I would say whatever I have said in the past. So this fasting and praying for an adjusted life for me was just obeying God. So all of you that I sent something out to you early this morning, that's because uh, somehow another God is mocked in me that you are special to him. I read something this morning that that it, it was it was one of those things where you actually know that people that are saying some things is not really sure. And here's what I heard and I read. And the message was don't rejoice too fast. Because the Bible says, I have not seen or ear heard what God has prepared for those that love him. Now, if you know the God that I know, that verse, the rest of that scripture says, but he has revealed it to his saints. So those that have received the revelation of the compassion of God, they're absolutely rejoicing now because they've come to the realization that this thing was so finished before the foundation of the world that God locked himself out of time so even he couldn't alter it. He forever established it in the heavens. And God himself had to come in through a woman to get into his own earth. I'm telling you, this thing was finished before it ever started because God finished it before the foundation of the world. And what you have to realize now is that he really finished it first in Jesus. Now he's finishing it by the Holy Ghost in us. And what he's waiting on now is for the sons of God to believe that he has finished it so he can actually finish it. That's one of the reasons why the apostles of the Spirit now, because the apostles of the Spirit now, they see the future and live in the present. So there is a making of the apostles, and the making of apostles is according to the pattern. Now, the pattern, I would say to you, is, is it God made or man made? Now we'll know. The first thing we must do is, and that, that's the believer, because I believe that what it was, it was a pattern of what God was saying, this is the pattern for this whole new man that has met me. In other words, there has to be an understanding of the place where you met God. There must be an understanding of how you met God and when you met God in the time that you met God. But here's what you have to understand. It really wasn't about you. It was about him revealing himself to you. That's why I always say that in the beginning I was baptized in liquid love and God later caused me to understand what I did was finished you before <laughs> I started you, but you had to walk it out. So this is where we are. You got to walk this thing out because it can't be just name it and claim it. It has to be a living reality. And the question is, what was the life changing experience that happened to you as an evidence of meeting God? This is always your greatest testimony and your greatest message. Without this, you're really not sure whether you know him because once you meet God, you can't unknow him. Because that was the time that God began to work in you to will and to do his good pleasure. 
So now he is changing you to become like him. The greatest example of this is first Jesus at the Jordan. Whenever God spoke and he said, this is my beloved son and whom I'm well pleased. And he hadn't done anything because God was declaring what was already finished in the heaven. The other thing is that Paul owned the master's road. And when he went to Ananias, God told Ananias, now you need to tell him how much he's going to suffer for my name's sake. So Paul had to suffer to come into the realization of the power that he had met when he met God. This is the beginning of the inner workings of life within your body based on a love relationship in Christ that's in you. Now, whenever you experience that, nobody can alter your course. Matter of fact, it will be so real in you that you already know that life is beyond death. So death has no power. So to threaten a man like that or a woman that has had the experience in God is a waste of your time. This is in your temple. This is in your body. This is beyond the veil. This is beyond human reasoning. And it's God working because it's the place of the fire of God. You have come face to face with God. Now you're pressing into him because this is a hidden place. Oh, God, I'm excited. It is the place of the sovereign God. So you can't stop it. You can't alter it. You just have to enjoy the journey. And what you want to understand is the joy of the Lord is your strength in this place. This is the throne of God, and it's where the revelation of God is received, and you have to actually give of yourself because the whole cost of this place is you. This is the reality of God. It is the place that you experience God, and the mystery is no longer a mystery, the veil is removed because now you're looking into the face of Jesus Christ and it is the eye of God. But who has heard of such a thing? Who have ever seen? Let me say it this way, that the beginning and the end was born in one day. And the question is, in Isaiah 66, and that's where we're going to go, in that, in that dialogue, it talks about can a nation be born in a day? And my message is, if it can, then a nation can be born in a moment. Hallelujah. So when you see that, you begin to understand that God is doing something so dynamic that it was finished so secure. Grace finished this thing to the point that it's by grace you save. It's through faith. It's the gift of God. You have nothing to boast about. Who has seen such a thing? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Shall the nation be born at once? Absolutely. Because now we're coming into the understanding that Jesus is the headship of all creation. Everybody must hold to the head. For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to birth and not cause to bring forth? Shall I cause to bring forth and shut the wound? Here's what the declaration is. And we're going back to the scriptures and let you see. It said, rejoice ye with Jerusalem and be glad with her. So where are we as a person? Where are we as the body? Where are we as a nation? We're at a place that if God can get somebody to believe, then we will actually experience a born again nation, which is absolutely what we need right now. It is beyond Martin Luther King. Because Martin Luther King brought and God sent him to bring forth the dream. But don't forget, he went, he went to the mountaintop. 
And now we have to begin to realize we must go beyond, beyond the fear of death. We must go beyond Memphis. One of the reasons why things are happening in Memphis is because that's the place where Martin got shot in the head. But what you have to understand, we got to go beyond the head, the head shot. Why? If the head shot is focused on a person, and if there is a person to be focused on, it's the head. Understand, there is a new head, and there is a new body, and it is called, it is called the Christ of God. In the earth. Has anybody, has anybody heard of such a thing? Absolutely. Those that believe. Those that have experienced God. Those that have pressed into this place. Why did I do what I did the way that I did it? First of all, it was by instruction of the spirit. Seven days to eradicate that which was external. Seven days, what was that which removed the internal, and the last seven was that which was eternal. So basically, we fasted and prayed for a changed life to be able to walk out eternity on planet Earth. God is working out of us. So where are we going? And what is happening? It's the out resurrection now. It's God by the Spirit bringing that which is hidden in you out to manifestation so all the world can see. Now you're going to know who really, who really have experienced God and God has actually worked in them and you'll see a God product. Isaiah 66, 1 and 2. It says, Thus saith the Lord, the heaven is mine, the heaven is my throne. And earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? He said, why are you all building all of this natural stuff calling it me? I'm building you my place of rest. That's why Jesus and God rested on the Sabbath day. Verse 2, he said, for all those things have my hands made. And all those things have been, that means they're temporal, said the Lord. But to this man, but to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit that trembleth at my word. In other words, the greatest thing that you should desire now is the word of God. And by this time, you should become the word. So you become a living epistle known and read of all men. You become the expression of God because God was looking for a people and a family. And now he's just looking for somebody to believe. He's already finished the work. Isaiah 6, 6 and 5 through 8, it says, hear the word of the Lord. Ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that casted you out for my name's sake, Ha, saith the Lord, <laughs> be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. Now, what happens is when people come to find out they have persecuted the truth because they didn't understand it, he says, they'll be ashamed, but you'll be at peace. Verse 6, he says, a voice of noise from the city, a voice from the temple, a voice of the Lord that renders compensate to compensate to his enemies. In other words, God says, I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to remove your enemy. Verse 7, and it says, because this is all happening in Jesus naturally, but it's happening to you spiritually. Before she travailed. She brought forth before her pain. Mm -mm -mm. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man child. In other words, God literally, by his power and experience, he birthed a man child. Verse 8. Who have heard 
such a thing? Who has seen such thing? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Absolutely, he was, the whole. Or shall a nation be born at once? Absolutely, his birth was the birth of the nation. For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. So we are actually asking for God to give us something that he did before he ever started, before the foundation of the world. Isaiah 66 and 10. He says, Rejoice ye with Jerusalem, the church, natural and physical, how spiritual. Be glad with her, all ye that love her, rejoice for joy with her, all ye that mourn for her. My God, this sounds like a joyful thing to me. I'm telling you, this is your release. This is the great day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Isaiah 66 and 12, it says, For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace like a river. Mm -mm -mm. In other words, when the storm come, those that have trusted in God, he says, I will extend peace like a river. And the glory of the Gentiles, mm, 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 like a flooding stream, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. It wasn't just talking about speaking in tongues. It just wasn't talking about the power. It was talking about a new life flowing from earthen vessels. It was talking about a new expression of God in bodily form. It wasn't just talking about one man. It wasn't just talking about one preacher. It wasn't just talking about one apostle. It was talking about an apostolic spirit that comes from the head apostle, chief, and only potentate. Isaiah 66, 15 and 16, it said, For behold, the Lord will come. Here's how he come. With fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. To render his anger with fury. That's compassion. That's great love. Mm -mm -mm. And his rebuke with flames of fire. In other words, he is literally saying, I am the fire. I have compassionate love for you. And I will give you beauty for your ashes. And you said yes. And I believed you. 16. It says, by fire. And by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Those that believe. You have to understand something that whenever you see the brightness of God. In the reality of conversion. He did say when you are converted, strengthen your brother. So everybody that can cure this, your assignment is strengthen your brothers. And love your enemies. Hallelujah. And do good to those that spitefully use you. And you'll begin to realize that God is working in you because you are an ambassador. He has given you the ministry of reconciliation. He has filled your house so that whenever you actually express yourself, you're expressing him. Isaiah 66 and 19. And I will set a sign among them. And I will send those that escape of them unto the nations. And it goes on to talk about those nations. But then it gets over to the last part of it. It says, that have not heard my fame. I'm going to send you to the nation that have not heard of my fame. Now, really, you're going to have a, you're going to have a word, but you're going to have a life. They can see. They can hear. They begin to realize until you can hear, you cannot see. Therefore, you cannot partake. Therefore, you can't walk in this new place. Hallelujah. It's not rocket science. It's only God. And God will do this thing. Just believe. Neither have they seen my glory. And they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. So our assignment is to just declare his glory. Just to be the expression of him. Because God is saying something now to the nations of the world. 
God is saying something to the church now. It's time for you to arise. Shine. Because your light has come. And Isaiah 66 and 23 says, Here is how it's going to progress. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before thee, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. Talking about Jesus, talking about a new nature, talking about that which is in earthen vessels, and we are about and experiencing the out resurrection, 23, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh, watch this, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord, who have seen such a thing. We are about to see the phenomenal and the phenomenal is not necessary signs, wonders, and miracles because those are on the flesh. We're getting ready to see the eternal justice of God. We're getting ready to see a brightness beyond the ability of human to see. So you have to be in this place that has been caught up into the place after you have been delivered. After you have understood in your mind, after you have conceived in your heart that you are one with God and you walk in free spirit, soul, and body, and now you're caught up into a fourth dimension, which is God himself doing what he desires because he's pushing us beyond Martin to the mountaintop. He's pushing us beyond mythos where they're bickering and arguing. Beyond headship. It's the new headship that's here. And he says, I have not seen, nor ear heard that which God has for the ones that love him. But he is now revealing it in and through his saints so he can get himself glory i want to thank you for the journey with me that we fasted for an adjusted life my life has changed my enlightenment has come to a place that there is joy in the journey and it's a permanent joy because i had an expectation for a change and i declare to you i have been changed by the spirit of the living God, and I know in whom I believe. This is a season and a time that America shall come into a people that will believe. And they will believe that Jesus, through God, caused America to be a united nation before she was ever born. And God is going to take her back to the vision. Because he said three great pearls shall come upon the nation. And this is not World War III. This is the manifestation of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. It's the church of the living God. It's the gathering of one. And my message to you is remember ye all are brethren because this is the new and living way. It's the life of God in a people of God on planet earth. And you'll know them by their fruit. Thank you for believing in the Lord. Amen.